Kylie Lowe is an investigative journalist and the host of that podcast, and I spoke with her about Bobby Miller's case. 14 years since, um, since Bobby was murdered. Let, let's talk a little bit about how sort of bizarre the case is. She was shot in the face. It is such a personal killing. And then shot again in the back of the head. Her dog was also shot. She'd been going through this tumultuous divorce. It almost sounded like it was an easy one uh, to solve, but it wasn't. Well, you know the true crime trope that the husband did it. But this case wasn't that straightforward. You know, there was a lot of coverage at the beginning about that tumultuous divorce and all the battles back and forth over finances. I mean, this was a years long process to finally end their marriage. And they had proceedings, additional court hearings planned for later in the week after Bobby was killed. Of course, she never made it to those hearings. And so the attention being on Gary Miller isn't a surprise. Now, in speaking with Bobby's brother, Ken, he's told me that Gary was cooperative with the investigation from the start, and Gary's also stayed in touch with Bobby's family, and he's just as dedicated to getting this case solved and figuring out what really happened to Bobby. So on its face, it, it wasn't as simple. And he's got his alibi, his new wife for that night. Um, it did seem interesting, though, that he had won the cottage in the divorce and then, yeah, I guess it was like 48 hours before she was murdered, the cottage burned down. So a lot of people thought, well, maybe out of revenge, she burned it down and out of anger, he, he killed her. But again, you know, he, he seemed to check out. So then the next sort of focus was her son, which defies all logic, what, what son would kill his parent. But why was the son eyeballed at all? Well, to be clear, the son, Jonathan Miller, has not been identified as a suspect. However, he hasn't been ruled out either. He does have a criminal history. He has uh, several charges to his name, including a felon in possession of a firearms charge. Uh, however, that firearm was not found to be connected to Bobby's killing. And he said he bought it for fear of his own life because his mother's case was unsolved. He always had a very close relationship with his mother and Ken, Bobby. Bobby's brother, you know, will attest to that. But he believes that there was some financial motivation for uh, Bob, for Bobby's son to kill his own mother. Um, but in previous reporting, he's maintained his in innocence and he's also referred to himself as a mama's boy. What's weird, though, um, and this was sort of the, the, the detail I can't shake, was that on some of these missing posters, Ken, Bobby's brother, had set up a camera, um, which is interesting in itself, you know, to see, you know, who is near the, the posters. And when the poster, one of the posters got ripped down, the last person who was seen before the camera went blank was Bobby's son, this, this son Jonathan, with a rock in his hand, almost as though he was the one you know, who destroyed the, the camera. Why would a son do that? Why would a son want to destroy a camera near a missing poster, you know, trying to, or near a, a, an unsolved uh, murder poster for solving his mom's murder? Well, it certainly does raise an eyebrow, and you would think that a son would want his mother's case solved just as much as anyone else. So, like I said, there there is some suspicion surrounding him, but police have yet to name him officially as a suspect. It's fascinating. One other issue, there's no robbery, no sex assault, so motive doesn't seem to be helpful here in, in, in finding anyone. But neighbors who live like 200 feet one way and 150 feet the other way, nobody heard four gunshot wounds that night? Particularly shotgun shots. I mean, those are loud. So that also is another bizarre aspect of the case. And you have to wonder, you know, what witnesses haven't come forward uh, or, you know, may have information still that could help close this case. Well, let me just put it out there. You've done a great job at highlighting this case. The New Hampshire Cold Case Unit will take anybody's tips if someone's watching right now and thinks they might be able to help. It's 603-271-2663. Again, 603-271-2663. Keep us posted, Kylie Lowe. And again, congratulations on doing such a stellar job on the investigation into this piece. Thank you. And thank you so much for having me and shining light on Bobby's story. Thank you for watching. Go to NewsNationNow.com to find NewsNation on your television provider. And don't forget to click the red subscribe button below to get more of NewsNation's fact-driven, unbiased coverage.